we're going to continue working some inequality problems uh, just so that you can see that your, your rules for solving equations and inequalities are virtually the exact same thing. Okay, in this problem, <clears throat> let's just ignore that there's a less than symbol. If this was an equals, then the first thing we would have to do would be to distribute out before we started to solve. Well, it's not any different just because it's in an inequality. So when we do our distribution, we get 3x minus 9 is less than 2x plus 8. Now we can continue moving things so that uh, our like terms are uh, together. We need to get this 2x over with the 3x so we can combine those like terms. So let's subtract 2x doing the opposite of it. 3x minus 2x would be x minus 9 would be less than 8. Now we still need to get x alone so let's add 9 to both sides so that we can cancel it out. And here we have x is less than 17. Nowhere in here did I multiply or divide by a negative number, so my symbol stayed the same. Now as far as graphing that line, let's say here's 0 and here is 17, somewhere over here. We're talking about all of the things that are less than 17. Well, that would be to the left of there. We have to decide whether we're going to put a parenthesis or a bracket on 17. Because there is not equality, we use a parenthesis. And now we can do our interval notation. So reading it from the left to the right, we would start at negative infinity and go all the way up to 17. Both of those endpoints get a parenthesis. Infinity always does and 17 does because it's not included. If we write this answer using set builder notation, it would be the set of all x's such that x is less than 17. So here would be our answers for this problem. In the next problem, we have a um, fraction that most people don't like. So let's go ahead and let's eliminate that fraction. Now here I only have um, you know, a left side and a right side, just two fractions. Remember the way that we get rid of that is to multiply through by the common denominator. So between 4 and 2 the common denominator would be a 4. So that's what we're going to multiply by. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. Now if you need to put it over 1 to see it as a fraction, you certainly can. By doing this, multiplying and dividing by the same thing cancels that out. And over here on the left hand side we have 3x plus 1. On the right hand side, 2 will go into 4 2 times. So we have 1 times 2 which is 2. And we did not multiply or divide by a negative, so the symbol stays the same. Now this is just a matter of finishing to solve. So let's subtract 1 from both sides, which will give us 3x is less than or equal to 1. I'm not multiplying or dividing by a negative. And then I would have to divide both sides by 3 to get x alone. So x would be less than or equal to 1 third. In number line, in a graph, if this is 0, and let's say this is 1, 1 third would be right about there. The things that are less than or equal to 1 third would start at 1 third, including it because of equality, and going to the left. So written as interval notation, this would be negative infinity all the way up to 1 third parentheses for infinity, a bracket for the one-third. Written as set builder, it would be the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to one-third.